Good to see everybody here today. <clears throat> here with your family. No better place to be than the Lord's house here on a Sunday. <clears throat> Hope you've had a wonderful week. I know some of our people have had some up and downs this week. And uh, by the grace of God, here you sit today. Amen. Praise the Lord. So good to be with you. Acts chapter 2 and find verse 41. Verse 41. Acts chapter 2 and verse 41. Starting over here with Miss. Miss Kathy, whatever her name is, Miss Kathy, um, all the way around church, come back up, go back out, come all the way around, end up over here with Dee and Michelle. Um, God has a purpose and a will for your life. And today I want to show you God's will for everybody in here, okay? No one, no exceptions. I'm going to show you the will of God for every single person person in this building today and if you leave here not knowing the will of God in this your fault because we're going to show you in scripture the will, the general will of God for every one of our lives today y'all ready Acts chapter 2 verse 41 through verse 47 the Bible says then they that gladly received his word that's referring to salvation okay this is Peter preaching the word of God then they that glad to receive the word were baptized. And the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Verse 43. And the fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common. And verse 45, and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. Yeah. Verse 46, and they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking and bread of bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Verse 47, we'll, we'll stop reading there and then we'll go over to Acts chapter 1 and read two verses. Verse 47, praising God and having favor with all people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Okay, go with me to Acts chapter 1 and look at verses 14 and 15. And then we'll go back to Acts chapter 2. It says, These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brother. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples He's the one bringing the word and said, the number of the names together were about 120. Okay, go back to Acts chapter 2 with us. <coughs> Acts chapter 2. So just to kind of get you up to speed here, um, some of you know, some of you don't. Um, but when Jesus died and rose again and ascended back to heaven, he told his disciples, to go back there to Jerusalem and began to pray. And uh, this here is this is 10 days later. This is in the upper room, and they are praying here. And here the Bible tells us there was about 120, right there in, in chapter 1. There was about 120 of them seeking and praising and seeking the Lord. Okay? So go back to Acts chapter 2, our um, passage for this morning, and find verse 41. Acts chapter 2. Just trying to get you, get you an understanding of what's going on before we preach. Acts chapter 2, verse 41. It says, Then they that had gladly received his word. You've got to understand that. That's, that's now Peter. That's, he's standing up and he's proclaiming, he's preaching the word of God. Okay? Let's finish reading verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day were, there were added unto them about three thousand souls okay 120 verse 1 3,000 now so 
in Acts chapter 1, that's why I had you go back there and read it, you had about 120. And now in chapter 2, you have about 3,000. Okay? So you see that the church is beginning to grow and beginning to blossom. Did y'all see that? Okay. Um, so there's about 3,000. I'm terrible at math. I was terrible in school at math. But that's about 3,100, 3,120 people that got saved in just one service. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's wonderful, isn't it? So here's the thought. Here's the question. Talking about the will of God for your life. Now you're gonna, again, from, from Kathy all the way around to Brother D and Michelle, I'm fixing to give you God's will for your life. Amen. A lot of people scratch their heads and say, well, I don't know what God's will is for my life. It's right here, laid out in Scripture for you. What God's will for your life once you become born again and get saved. God's ultimate will is for you to get saved. And then he's got it laid out for you, what he has for you after you get saved. Y'all ready? We're just going to use the Bible, okay? We're not going to make up stuff. Y'all okay with that? Amen. We're just going to let the Bible preach to us. All right. Um, now, here's the question. Now, after all of this, after all these new converts, it's time for discipleship. Now, what do they do from here? What a question. Now that I'm saved and I'm a child of God and I'm going to heaven, what is God's will for my life now? What am I expected of Christ now that I am his child? So you have all these new converts, over 3,000 new converts. Now what does the Bible say they do next? You ever thought about that? So number, look in verse 41 with me. Verse 41, and we'll start reading. Um, I'm going to pretty much stay in Acts today. I'm going to turn a couple different places. Um, if you'd like to turn there, you can. If not, you do not have to. And uh, we'll try to give you the word and we'll go to our house. It says, verse 41, it says, Then they that gladly received his word. Um, that's for, Again, that's referring to salvation. Okay, they begin, they were a child of God. They gladly received his word being preached by Peter. And then it says, here's our first point. It says here, you can underline it in your Bible if you mark your Bible. Then they that gladly received his word, okay, they're saved. They asked God to come into their heart. And number one, the first point is, it says here that they were baptized. Okay? They were baptized. Say, what's the will of God for my life, Brother Stephen, after I get saved? Follow the Lord in scriptural baptism. Amen. Say, well, that get, does baptism take me to heaven, Brother Stephen? It has nothing to do with you going to heaven, but it has everything to you doing, being, uh, be, uh, obeying the scripture, okay? And being in obedience to the Lord, okay? So, follow the Lord in believer's baptism. That's why we call it believer's baptism, because if you've ever heard the preacher say in the, in the baptistry, you know, by my brother or sister's profession of faith. See, the, I can't see your heart. That's why you say, by their profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay? You're just going off what someone tells you. You can't see their heart. Only God can see their heart. That's why we say, by their profession of faith. That's why we call it believer's baptism. Um, so, it says that they were baptized. You do not have to pray about getting baptized. Did y'all know that? I've had people tell me that. Let me pray about, I've, I've received Christ as my Savior. He showed me that I'm lost and I need, need to be saved. I've done that. Now let me pray about being baptized. You do not have to pray about being baptized. Okay? You do not have to think about being baptized. It's right there in Scripture. Um, I'm going to show you a couple more places in Acts. But you don't have to pray about being baptized. There's some things, y'all, you just don't have to pray about. It's in Scripture. It tells you what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Um, a lot of times people say that for an excuse. It's a cop-out. Um, but you don't have to pray about getting baptized. After salvation, you follow the Lord in scriptural baptism. So, the Bible says they were all baptized the same day they got saved. How about that? That's a lot, ain't it? Turn with me. 
Now notice the pattern here, because a lot of you are not convinced yet. Notice the pattern. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. We're not even leaving Acts. Acts chapter 8. I, if you want to, go home and read Acts chapter 8, verses 27 through verses 38. Okay, I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to pick up reading in verse 34. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee to whom speaketh of the prophet this of himself or some other man. Love verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began the same scripture and preached unto him what? Jesus. That's what we're doing today. Uh, and they came, and as they went on their way, they came into a certain water. And eunuchs, then the eunuch said, see, here's water. He's talking to Philip. See, here's water. What do hinder me to be baptized? Okay. What's stopping me from being baptized? Listen. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the unit, and he baptized him. Okay? Y'all see the pattern there? Look in the... Look with me at Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. You can find it in Acts 10. You can find it in Acts 16. But we're going to look at Acts 16. Acts 16 verses 25 through 33. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loose. And the keeper of the prison, awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors, and drew out of his sword and would have killed himself, and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, doing, "Do thyself no harm, for we are all here." Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, "Sir, what must I do to be saved?" Wow, what a question! What must I do to be saved and they said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and our house in verse 32 and verse 33 we'll uh, stop reading there and they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in the house in verse 33 and he took them the same hour of the night washed their stripes and was baptized and he and all his straight way that straightway word, that's a military term. That means immediately, Brother Ricky. That means right away, okay? What are you saying? I'm saying this. The Lord wants you to follow him in scriptural baptism after you get saved. That's what it's saying. You can go to Acts 10. You ain't even got to leave Acts. And you can see the pattern after pattern after pattern. Someone accepts the Lord as their Savior, they get baptized, Okay? Um, I mean, our Lord and Savior got baptized. Look in, uh, before, we, before we leave that thought, you don't get baptized to get saved. You get baptized because you are saved. There is a crowd that says, well, you've got to be, you be baptized to go to heaven. Right, here's the problem with that. That's not in the Bible. Amen. Okay? Think about the thief on the cross with me. Think about the thief on the cross. The Lord told that man, he said, today... Thou shalt be with me in paradise. Okay? Meaning that man, when he left there, his, when he died, he went to heaven with the Lord. I see nowhere where he got off the cross and was baptized and got back on the cross. Okay? So I have a problem with someone saying, you've got to be baptized to go to heaven. That's found nowhere in Scripture. Absolutely nowhere. But you get baptized because you are saved. Um, baptism. Say, so why are you preaching? Well, a lot of people don't understand this stuff. Baptism identifies you as a Christian, okay? It identifies you as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, you're straight up. You're in the baptistry with the preacher, okay? You're standing straight up. I've seen people hold their hands out, okay? Uh, I don't know if you would feel that comfortable with me, but so I've seen people hold their hands up. Why? That's a picture of standing. That's a picture of the cross. Y'all with me? 
That's the picture of Christ. I've seen people hold their hands out and let the preacher get the hold of them. I mean, they got their hands out. So you're straight up. This identifies you as a Christian. You're straight up. You're straight way up. And that's a type of the cross. You go under the water, okay? The preacher takes you under the water. That's a picture of Colossians chapter 2 and verse 12. Being, Bible says, being buried with him in baptism, okay? Why do you take us under, Brother Stephen? That's a picture of him being buried, okay? That's a picture of him, and then you come up. We don't leave you under the water. Why? Because God didn't stay under. Amen. Jesus didn't stay dead. We're not keeping you under. We're bringing you back up. Amen? Why? Because Jesus is alive this morning. You're not going to stay under. He come out of the tomb and rose again. We serve a risen Savior this morning, folks. So, you go straight up. You're straight up. That's the type of the cross. The preacher takes you under the wall. That's a picture of Colossians 2, verse 12, being buried with him in baptism. And then you come up out of the water like Jesus come up out of the tomb and rose again. Does that make any sense to y'all? We serve a living, risen Savior today, and I am so thankful. Have you talked to him this morning? Yeah. Spent any time with him? Have you made time for him today? Have you talked to the master today? Because he's alive and well. Amen. I've spoken to him already. I hope you have. Baptism, y'all, is a picture of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay? Amen. A lot of people don't know that kind of stuff. So, Say, what is the will of God, Brother Stephen, for my life? Should I start teaching a class? You know, should I? Look, maybe God does have a, 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 a particular will for your life. But here's the basic general will God has for each and every one of our lives. And sometimes we get ahead of God, and we're not living in the will of God to begin with for him to show us anything else that we may do for his kingdom. So number one, you've got to be baptized. Amen. If you know you've been saved and going to heaven, you follow the Lord in scriptural baptism. Amen. So, number one, you got to be baptized. Number two, look in verse 41. I spent way too much time on that one, so we're just going to move on quickly. Look at, go back with me to Acts chapter 2 and verse 41. I'll just make a few comments and we'll go on. Verse 41, the Bible says, and then they gladly received his word. Okay, that's salvation. We're baptized. Y'all see that? And the same day, we're added unto them about 3,000 souls. We're added unto them, if you would like to underline those words. We're added unto them. Now, those 3,000 that got saved become a member of the church and was added to that 120 back in Acts 1. That's why we read that to you. They were added to that 120 back in Acts 1. So number two, save you a lot of preaching. Number two, get planted in the house of God. <laughs> Find where God wants you to get planted and get there. Amen. Okay? Get planted. Find out where God wants you to get planted and get you some roots down, get you a foundation, and get planted for the glory of God. Now, let me say this about that. There's no perfect church. Did y'all know that? Some of you are shocked right now. There's no perfect congregation. There's no, no perfect preacher. There's no perfect church, okay? Pleasant Hill Baptist Church is a great church with great people. Some of the greatest people that I know go right here to this church. Have great hearts. They're sincere people that go here. Um, but she's not perfect. She has her flaws. Me, I've got my flaws. You, you've got your flaws. Amen? There's no, you got to get that in here. There's nobody perfect. There's no perfect church out there. But God wants you to get planted somewhere for the glory of God and serve him for the right reasons. Amen? Get yourself planted. Can I read you a verse? Psalms 92 and verse 13. Psalms 92 and verse 13. The Bible says, The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Verse 13, those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Did y'all hear that? You've got to get rooted. Amen. Number one, 
says that they were baptized. Go back with me to Acts chapter 2. Say, I want to know what the will of God is. From Here it is right here. Here it is. Number two, it says they were added unto them. Meaning, get somewhere and get planted where God has you to be. Number three, look in verse 42, if you will. It says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' what? Doctrine. Okay? Number three. Number three, get into God's word. So that's just too simple for us saying it's got to be bigger than that. I'm just telling you, that's the will of God for your life. Say, so what's the will of God for my life, Brother Steve? Follow the Lord in baptism. Get, find you where God wants you, the church God wants you and your family in. Make your mind up. Get planted. And number three, get yourself in the Word of God. Yeah, but you know, I think you want me to do something more, something bigger than that now. I'm just telling you, you never find God's will until you do it God's way. And this is God's way. Everybody wants some big sparkly, I mean, just something written in the sky. God ain't like that. Amen. You better just have faith. You better do the little things. Yeah, but that's not going to, you know, that's not going to give me a title or nothing, you know. I'm not going to be seen. I'm not going to be heard. You know, people's not going to lift me up. I'm just telling you. It messes up a lot of people because it's just simple. <laughs> Amen. Added unto them, number one. Baptism, number two. Added unto the church, number three. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Get into the word. John, can I read you a scripture? John chapter 1. John chapter 1 and verse 1. So the Bible says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, with God, and the word was God. Y'all hear that? Look over in verse 14 of the same chapter. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That gives me chills to read it. You can't separate Jesus and his word. He is his word. Amen. Y'all ever read the scripture in Revelation chapter 19? It says, kiss the son. That's how you do that. He is his word. You cannot separate Christ from his word. You cannot separate the word from Christ. It says, all the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Say, I want to be in the God, God's will, Brother Steve. You better get in His Word. The theme of the Bible, church, is J-E-S-U-S. -S. You'll find Him everywhere in there. If you want to look for Jesus, if you want to know more about Jesus, get in the Word that tells you more about Jesus. It's the book, Miss Tracy, that's all about Him. Say, I want to know more about Jesus. Get in the book that's all about him. Number four, look in verse 42. Go back with me to Acts. It says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread. What's the last three words of verse 42? And in prayers. Hey, Brother Stephen, I want to know what the will of God is for my life. How's your prayer life? Well, you know, how's your prayer life? How much time do you spend talking to God? Because in the Bible, that's how he talks to you. But when you pray, that's how we talk to him. Amen. Heard a preacher tell me one time, son, if you really want to get plugged into God, you get serious about prayer. Yeah, but you know, there's got to be more to it. I'm giving you the will of God for your life right now. Become a prayer warrior. Number five, I'm trying to hurry. Number five, we got a few more. Number five, look in verse 44 and 45 with me. And all that believed were together and all things and had all things common. 
and sold their possessions and goods and departed them to all men as every man had what? Need. What they do, Brother Phil? They become givers when they got saved, not takers. Say, so what's the will of God for my life, Brother Phil? He wants you to become a giver. Give what? It doesn't matter. What do you want me to sacrifice? Whatever he tells you to. What do you want me to give? Money? Maybe. Time? Kind words? Encouragement? Probably all of the above. Yeah, but you know, there's got to be more to it than that. God's interested in the little things. That's where we get it twisted. Oh, I need a big platform, brother. See, I need to be seen, you know. It's a big deal. How are you doing with the little things? God said it's more blessed to give than to receive. Become a giver. That's God's will for your life. Not only that, number six, verse 46 Verse 46, the Bible says, And they continued daily with one accord in the temple. It says, they continue, And they continued daily with one accord. Y'all see that? Verse 46 is teaching us just to become faithful. It says that they were faithful in their Bible reading. They were faithful in their praying. They were faithful in their giving. They were just faithful. It says, and then they continued daily with one accord in the what? in the temple become faithful to your church become faithful to your church become faithful to God's word be a faithful giver have a faithful prayer life have a time where you pray a set aside where you talk to God have a time where you allow him to talk to you in his word be sensitive to the Spirit enough to know when He wants you to give something away. They were faithful. They were faithful to read God's Word daily. They were faithful to pray daily. They were faithful to, to God's house. The Bible says this, A faithful man who can know it. A faithful man who can find one. Let me tell you what faithfulness does in the Christian life. It separates you from most others. It does. You find a Christian that's faithful to the Word of God and faithful to their prayer life. I mean, even when they don't feel like it. I mean, it's, it's, they've made their mind up. They're going to be faithful to the Lord. You know, they're faithful to their church. And I'm not talking about working and this, that, and that. I'm not one of them, those guys where, you know, I'm not that guy. But I'm, I am the guy that, that follows Scripture and says, forsake not the assembly of God. So if you're forsaking your church, then you're in you're, you're disobedience to Scripture. Okay? So, but be faithful. Be faithful. God blesses faithfulness. Um, become faithful. The Bible says a faithful man who can find. I tell you, if you find a faithful Christian, they're separated than most other Christians. They have a different walk about them. They have a different talk. They have a different light because they're just faithful. They're consistent. They're consistent. When no one's looking, they're just faithful. When no one's watching, they're just faithful. When they get no, no recognition, they're still faithful. And it separates them. It separates their, their relationship with God than others. There's a difference in them. They're spending time with the master. Faithfully. And not only that, verse 47, it says, I want you to look at verse 47 and Acts chapter 5, verse 42 for our last point today. <coughs> Acts chapter 5, verse 42, and I'm going to read you verse 47 in our text it says praising God and having favor with all the people 
and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Look in Acts chapter 5, verse 42. And daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and preach what? Jesus Christ. Say, what's the will of God for my life, Shelby? It's to tell others about Jesus and not be ashamed of him. This was the toughest one on me because of my nature, okay? And that's just an excuse, but I'm natured very, pri- I, I, I'm very quiet and to myself. And this one's tough on me to, 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 to get out of my comfort zone. Um, but that's the will of God for Stephen's life. Amen. It's to mind the spirit, not the flesh. Because his flesh may be uncomfortable at times, but the spirit man, he'll give you that boldness and that strength you need to do what God wants you to do. So the lastly, I would say this. Begin to witness and tell others about Jesus Christ. I wonder how full our church would be on a Sunday morning if everybody would just go tell somebody what he done for them and not be ashamed of him. I wonder if the devil has stole your witness because when God saved you, if you were anything like me, when God saved you, man, he put a witness inside of you and you just yeah. you were just running, running and wanting to tell everybody what God done for you. So my question is, have you allowed devil to steal your witness? He'd love nothing more than to steal your witness. And that's why the statistics say that 90, 95, now I don't know if this is true, but the statistics say 95% of all Christians do not witness at all. And my friend, that's why America is struggling. That's why God's church is struggling. Because 95 of all Christians do not witness at all. Amen. Period. Wonder why we're in the shape we're in. As a country, as a church, as a whole. One man said it like this. All it is, it's simple. It's just one beggar telling another beggar where he found the bread. Evangelizing the world is still the responsibility of the local church. Okay? <laughs> it is evangelizing the lost and dying world is still the responsibility in 2000, what are we in 2024. It is still the responsibility of the church to win others to Christ Amen. and to soul win and to warn others and to invite them to the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's your responsibility. That's God's will for your life. So I don't know what God's will for my life. Number one, you get baptized. Number two, get to where God wants you and get grounded in that church. Okay? Number three is get into God's word. Number four, become a prayer warrior. Five, begin to give. Six, just become faithful. Everything you do, just be faithful at it. Number seven, be a soul winner. Say, well, it's all right there in Scripture. We didn't have to make anything up, did we? What God's will is for every single person on this earth. I don't know if we have anybody. Brother Gay, y'all want to do invitation? Y'all come on. Say, Brother Steve, I'm saved. Where do I go from here? called discipleship this is this is what discipleship is i just preached a whole message on it if you want to know how to help your friends your co-workers your neighbors preach, just preach a whole message on what they need to do after they get saved you don't have to wonder anymore about yourself or anybody else what the will of god is for everybody's life Amen. where do i go from here well if you're saved Bible wants you said you need to get baptized. Number two, get planted in the house of God. Find out where God wants you, okay, and get there. Number three, begin to read your Bible faithfully. Faithfully. Make your mind up. Let it become a habit to you. We all got habits, good habits, bad habits. 
How about you get the habit of getting in God's Word daily? And then begin to pray faithfully. And then begin to tell others of Jesus Christ and what He's done for you. That's God's will for your life. Last but not least, become a giver. You say, oh, I'm a taker, Brother Steve. Well, you're not in God's will if you're a taker. He wants you to give. Giving will change your life. It'll change your life financially. It'll change your life emotionally, spiritually, any way you can think of. If you'll just trust God and you just give when God says to give. Become a faithful giver. Become a distributor, not a taker. And watch God bestow blessings on your life. Let's stand this morning. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. If you'd like to come pray. None of this matters this morning unless you're born again. So this morning, if you're not saved, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. If you're not saved this morning, would you come? We have ladies and men who would love to take the word of God and show you how to be saved. We can take you to one of the classrooms, have one of our ladies, one of our men, open the word of God this morning and show you how to be saved. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this message today. God, it opened my eyes to a lot of things. And God, forgive me, Lord, for not being in your will at times. God, I pray today, Lord, that we'll get a hold of this. And Lord, and we'll see where we need to do better, God. And God, I pray, Lord, if there's one lost person here today, Lord, under the sound of my voice that you're dealing with, I pray, Lord, that they would step out by faith and accept your Son as their Savior before it's everlasting too late. Thank you for loving us and thank you for this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank <laughs> you.